The Israeli Defense Forces have just released footage they say shows the actions of their ground forces in Gaza over the last 24 hours. They say they struck Hamas units, attempting to launch anti-tank missiles and mortar shells. Although they met resistance, they claim to be neutralizing Hamas cells. But however compelling the combat footage, it's impossible to know how successful they're being in their attempt to destroy Hamas, nor to know the cost in civilian life of urban warfare in the congested streets of Gaza City. I completed a situation assessment. Last night, we have accomplished a phase in the war. We will continue to be strong and precise and hunt down every terrorist. The IDF released night vision footage of its tanks and armoured vehicles entering Gaza last night after mobile phone and internet had been cut so people couldn't inform Hamas fighters about the location of the Israeli columns. It also means they can't send pictures of the damage undoubtedly being wreaked on civilian infrastructure, not to mention those being killed. This was the neonatal ward at Shifa Hospital in Gaza City on Wednesday. Apart from the patients, thousands of civilians have sheltered there because under international law a hospital shouldn't be targeted. But the IDF says Hamas has its headquarters beneath the hospital, suggesting they might regard it as a legitimate target. We will soon continue to expose, like we exposed yesterday, Shifa Hospital. We will continue to expose more details on Hamas using the civilian population in Gaza, foreign and local. We will expose this soon. Fighter bombers carried out the most intense aerial bombardment to date. Israel says it killed the Hamas commander in charge of drones, paragliders and aerial defence and struck 150 underground targets in the northern Gaza Strip. The tunnels enable Hamas fighters to move around undetected, but some of the 229 Israeli hostages are also being held there, in danger of being killed by their own air force or by their captors in revenge. Hamas says its fighters are involved in clashes with Israeli forces. The Hamas-run health ministry estimates at least 400 Palestinian civilians were killed overnight. Aid agencies say they've lost contact with their workers after all phone and internet services were cut. Heavy artillery is pounding Gaza constantly. The Israelis say they're making the earth shake. And as residents of one of Gaza City's refugee camps inspected what had happened in the night, that was how it felt. It's like an earthquake, said Al Ahmadi. No one's paying us attention. It's an execution. Many Palestinians believe Israel wants to force them out of Gaza, and they interpret it as a threat, not a warning, when Israel's army tells them again to move south from places like this. As for the Israeli people, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu issued a solemn warning. The war inside the Gaza Strip will be difficult and long, and we are prepared for it. This is our second war of independence. We will fight for the defense of the homeland. The new phase of Israel's assault started last night with dozens of airstrikes. Israel believes overwhelming military strength can pacify Gaza. But military power alone has never brought lasting quiet, let alone peace, in this conflict's long history. Israel claimed one of its strikes killed a senior Hamas commander. Israeli tanks and soldiers moved forward into the north of the Gaza Strip. Gaza's visible from a hill in Starot. Israel will resist pressure for a ceasefire. And there's another factor. The more Palestinians that Israel kills, especially civilians, the greater the levels of anger and outrage elsewhere in the Middle East among Israel's friends as well as its enemies. Now, that doesn't guarantee that the war would spread, but it does increase levels of anger and volatility in a part of the world that is already very fragile.
Israel's ground war has started. Containing it here is now the biggest political and diplomatic challenge in the world. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News in southern Israel. He said the north of the territory surrounding Gaza City was hit overnight on a scale we've never seen before. He sent us this report from the southern city of Khan Yunis. You know, communication is very, very difficult in, in Gaza since 24 hours as Israel cut all of the communication. Mobile uh, carrier, the two main mobile carriers are not functioning. The internet lines are not functioning in everywhere. And getting information is really hard and difficult. Very few people who are still having international SIM cards and they can do roaming using Israeli uh, uh, mobile services, people who are close to, uh, to the border, they still can uh, communicate and between time to time they uh, post some uh, on social media. They also, some of the local radio uh, stations are still functioning and they, 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 they were able to talk to uh, their correspondent in the north who described what happened last night as the biggest ever uh, airstrike that targeted this area. He said that it was like an earthquake. We understand that the Indonesian hospital was struck with an airstrike uh, yesterday. The hospital was out of service for quite a long time, like a, a week ago the hospital was out of service because no fuel and was evacuated. But today it was the main building of the hospital was uh, destroyed. Also around Shifa Hospital in Gaza City, there was a lot, a lot of airstrikes, 10, 15 airstrikes, according to people around Chifa Hospital. They are cutting most of the roads towards that hospital. Uh, communication, as I said, is extremely uh, difficult. We are unable to verify a lot of reports about uh, the, num the number of people dead or injured. But as far as the health ministry was, uh, was doing a press conference uh, uh, this, uh, this afternoon, they said about 400 people were killed uh, overnight, but they said Hundreds other are missing under the collapsed building in the in the north.